Hello, and welcome to this program about mooring operations. Why? Well, in fact, a professional mooring operation is a kind of missing link in the overall nautical chain. Today, there is little information on or international regulations available for mooring lines, winches or bollards. Strange when you consider that a lot of incidents happen during mooring. Movements of a badly moored vessel can result in expensive damage to cranes, manifolds or other vessels. A ship breaking loose of its moorings is a nightmare to all ports. A professional mooring process can not only reduce incidents, it can also save time, money and cut down on emissions. This video focuses on the main causes of mooring accidents. 95% of the incidents with personal injury is caused by ropes and wires, being hit by a rope. Just 5% is due to equipment failure. 60% of all those rope incidents happen during mooring operations. So, improving mooring operations reduces accidents and personal injuries. Unprofessional people uh, involved in mooring operations uh, do not see the safety dangers uh, uh, that are actually there, that are existent. They do not know that things have to work together, that uh, the hands have to grip into each other to make a mooring as such safe, uh, a safe operation. And good communication between the pilots, the captain and the tugboats is of the utmost importance for that. Safe mooring starts at sea, with a good preparation and precise calculation of the forces on winches, bollards and lines. All components come together in the mooring plan, sometimes made up by the terminal, but in all cases the captain is responsible for safe mooring. A professional plan is based on four rules. First, all the lines should not exceed a vertical angle of 30 degrees. Therefore, the horizontal distance from fair lead to bollard is twice the vertical distance. Second, the spring lines should be placed as parallel to the vessel as possible. Third, breast lines are most effective when connected square to the vessel. If the optimal angles cannot be realized, please remember that this will have a significant effect on the mooring system. The last rule, lines should work together. To ensure that the forces are spread over the lines, they should have the same characteristics. So one and two and three and four, same function, same specs. The terminal operator can file such a mooring plan per IMO number for the next visit of the ship or a sister ship. In all mooring plans, it's very important that the hook or bollard ashore isn't the weakest link, like probably in this situation. start by taking a look at all the components in the mooring system and which of those components should be the weakest link. The brake of the mooring winch should always be the weakest component. It's a safety device in the overall configuration, which should render before 60% of the minimum braking load of the line is reached. The bollard ashore or on board should always remain the strongest component of all. It's not common practice on every merchant vessel to continuously review the mooring system and ensure that the winch brake indeed is the weakest link of all the components. So it all starts with a good calculation. For that calculation, the captain needs reliable information, which should be collected prior to entering port. Remember, safe mooring starts at sea. So let's start with the information on the first part of the mooring system the winches. As we saw, the winch, and especially the maximum holding capacity of the brake, is a crucial safety component, so vital specifications for the captain. 
figures, all available on board in the winch manual. Crucial is that the maximum holding capacity of the winch brake is tested on a regular basis to ensure that the information on the maximum holding capacity is correct. A recommended rule is to adjust the mooring winch brake to 60% of the minimum braking load of the mooring lines. It's a good practice to stencil results of the test on the winch and also mark the correct payout direction. Bear in mind that the results of such a test or adjustment are not very reliable if the winch is not fitted with a spring applied brake. Something to consider for new buildings. Mooring lines, different sorts, different specs, different prices. But crucial is that the line is much stronger than the winch brake, so the line won't break in extreme conditions. Where can one find the information about the minimum braking load of a line? How can we ensure that the line has not become weaker? When and how should we order new lines? As a rule of thumb, Take the vessel's equipment number, look up the minimum braking load in MSC Circular 1175 and double it. For example, the equipment number is 3040. The minimum braking load found in this table is 500 kN. So the line should have a minimum braking load of 100 ton, and so the winch brake should be adjusted at 60%, so 60 ton. Each individual line has a certificate that clearly specifies its minimum braking load. But the same strength doesn't mean the same properties. Two ropes, same minimum braking load, but different properties. This one, an open structure and easy to check the quality, easy to splice, but also open for rust, sand, salt and sunlight, which may cause damage due to internal abrasion. This rope is more expensive, but has a cover for a longer lifetime, a better shape stability on a winch drum, and is safer when the minimum braking load is exceeded. This test shows the difference. This is how the open structure rope reacts. The covered line reduces the snapback, so less risks for the crew. But when ordering a line, there is more to be considered. The elasticity of the mooring line should match the other mooring lines used for the same function. For example, all the breast lines should have the same elasticity. That's the only way all the forces can be equally spread over all the mooring lines. How can we maintain lines optimally? By ensuring that there are no burrs or grooves in the leads, also, avoid contact between lines and sharp edges and ensure that there are no twists or kinks in the lines. And finally, turn the line on the drums end-to-end -end half time. Even if the lines are maintained optimally, regular visual checks are important to maintain the quality of the rope. In case of doubt about the condition, send the rope over to your manufacturer for a check. Information on the safe working load of bollards and hooks and layout can be obtained via the terminal operator prior to arrival of the vessel. That information is very important to the captain. Information about the safe working load of bollards or hooks is stenciled on each bollard and hook. Unlike bollards, quick release hooks guarantee easy local and remote release of mooring lines, even if they're still under tension. During the stay, the forces on all hooks are monitored. There's a vital need for a good information, an accurate mooring plan given to the captain of the vessel at sea, providing adequate uh, details about the hooks, the bollards, the mooring line positions, is a vital part of making sure the mooring operation goes smoothly. I think 
think uh, uh, that the information uh, a master needs uh, to brief his crew in a professional way uh, necessitates uh, proper information from the port about the bollard distances, uh, about bollard pulls and the requirements of a port. For instance, how many lines can be put onto one bollard. Uh, there is room for improvement, uh, but that also requires that uh, uh, the ship uh, um, sends in the information on their possibilities. So uh, after all, it's again uh, a mooring plan uh, with the requirements uh, which can solve a lot of problems. Professional line handling starts with a clean and safe working area. Of course, the deck is anti-slip and the working area should be properly lit. The crew should be trained and briefed for the mooring operation. Ideally, there should be a crew of three crew members and one officer on the aft and forward mooring station. If this cannot be realized due to the limited manning of the vessel, mooring operations should be well planned and maximum safety precautions should be taken. Not only the crew on deck, but also linemen ashore should be well trained. All mooring lines are prepared for paying out smoothly, so flaked on deck. And even during the preparation, never stand in the bite of a rope. Each crew prepares two heaving lines, with a good visible and soft monkey fist. It has sometimes happens that the monkey fist is of a material for, uh, as iron or something and that can not only hurt the boatman or other people on the quay, but it can even kill a boatman on the quay. Make sure the spring lines are tensioned so they won't get stuck between fenders and vessel, or even worse, under the fenders. The breast lines are passed from inboard to outboard. And very important, all lines should bear the same tension. During stay in port, spring lines should be on the brake to avoid the ship walking along the quay. Breast lines can be put on auto-tension mode. If wind or current is picking up above 4-6, switch for extra safety from auto-tension to brake mode because the brake mode is stronger than the tension mode. Finally, when the ship is leaving, one still needs to pay attention to safety. During the unmooring operation, it's very important that there is a constant eye contact between the deck crew, the first mate and the boatman, because when the rope is unmoored, it is in the water, and then it can come into the propeller and it can stuck on the quayside and then you get a critical situation for the boatman as well as the ship. The nautical sector is an innovative sector, constantly looking for improvements of the entire mooring process to make it faster, simpler and better for the environment. A good example is the so-called Moormaster, based on vacuum techniques. The vacuum pads, operated by one push on a button, keep the vessel in a secure position. Another innovative mooring system without any line handling is based on magnetics. A system that doesn't require modifications to the key and can be used anywhere is the so-called shore tension. A flexible hydraulic standalone system that equals the use of a 60 tons bollard pull tugboat to keep a vessel in a fixed position along the quay. film we focused on mooring operations, on the daily practice and on improvements in the whole nautical chain of professional mooring for more safety, more efficiency and therefore a shorter turnaround time for a ship in a port. 
And last but not least, to protect expensive equipment like cranes or manifolds. We need good information, training and communication, and we need to raise the professionalism around the daily line handling practices. Give always the good communication between uh, the guys on deck, that they are always in, in direct contact with the boatmen, as always. Not only use your VHF, but also use your eyes. With the increasing number of accidents, uh, which are probably uh, um, reasoned in the fact uh, that the number of professional seamen are diminishing, uh, the awareness at international uh, institutions uh, has been raised, and uh, I'm confident that uh, there will be respective regulations in the near future. So there's a lot of work to do, because in the nautical chain, mooring shouldn't be the missing link. Goodbye and good luck. <laughs>